super early, to, well not super early, what is it, quarter to nine on Friday. So this is Good Friday, kind of start of the long Easter weekend. Um, I was up bright and early this morning. Can you hear all the birds? Yeah. Yeah, I was up at about ten past six, I think. So I've been working a little bit more on my Mount Pleasant tea whilst catching up with Angela and Caroline and a bit of the grocery girls. I've got my camera, my phone, on a selfie stick tripod and it's a little bit wobbly with the wind. I hope that's okay. Um, and today is going to be really hot. Yesterday it got up to about 22 degrees, which is disgusting for Wales. That's not why I moved here. <laughs> um, and Dave and I have got some gym videos to film today. That's why I'm in my official t-shirt. You stop blowing. I've got the Dave's Gym flag banner face that I'm resting it on and the flag keeps smacking the camera. Maybe if the wind changes direction we'll be all right. Anyway, yeah, really hot yesterday. Apparently it's going to be even hotter today. So Dave and I wanted to get our filming for the exercise videos done as soon as possible. So I thought I'd better crack on. So I was going to do another Q&A. Um, and next on my list of questions came from Emma of Elder McCraft. Hey, lovely lady. She asked me, is there a story about your wedding ring? It's lovely. So I have a turquoise silicone wedding ring. This isn't my original wedding ring. Um, I've got a lovely 18 karat gold one and a beautiful um, eternity ring that Dave bought me for our Christmas after I'd had all the three of the kids. Um, but about probably a, nearly a year ago, um, I went wild and spent £7.99 on a set of silicon rings from Amazon. <laughs> And the reason I swapped over, um, yeah, they're super squishy. And I got a set that had, um, I think there's a pink one in there, which I'll never wear. A black one, which my mother asked me to stop wearing because it made her think that Dave had died. <laughs> and a pretend gold and a pretend silver one. And the reason I got this is because of a medical injury called degloving. If you're medical based, you'll know what that is. But basically degloving is when you get something that you're wearing caught on something else and it strips the flesh off that part of your body. So um, because of the amount of weightlifting I do, either myself for my own training or with my clients with personal training, um, I was just moving hundreds of kilos every day. Oh, it's no good. It's no good. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do something different here. Bear with. Okay, that's going to have to do it. Um, yes, all the weight training I was doing basically. And so catching your wedding ring on weights equipment and stripping the flesh off your finger is a not inconsiderable health and safety issue that you need to think about if that's what you do for a living. Um, and so I swapped over to silicon wedding ring. Dave has got a black one that he wears as well. So that's why I swapped over. Um, and not long after I swapped over, I started getting all of my rheumatoid arthritis problems and my fingers were swelling as well. And basically, because this is so soft and forgiving and squishy, if my hands swell and get stiff and painful, um, it's far less uncomfortable than wearing a solid metal ring. Um, I still have them in my jewellery box. And... Um, Maybe when I get my RA under control, I'll go back to wearing it sometimes on the weekends. But for now, I'm going to stick with my silicone ones. Next up, ooh, Kaz, Kaz63. Hello, lovely lady. She asked me, if you were to lose your knitting mojo, how or what would you do to get it back? Asking for a friend. Have you run out of knitting mojo, Kaz? I'm sorry to hear that. This is such a great time for us all to be knitting busily at home. I hope it's magically restored to you. I don't think I've ever really completely lost my knitting mojo. I've certainly run out of enthusiasm for a particular project. And I've certainly looked through all my stash entries on Ravelry. And I have some, I have like over 80 stash entries on Ravelry. And then promptly decided I have nothing to knit. <laughs> Jenny can testify that every now and then I send her a message that just says, I have nothing to knit. Um, 
And I find that when that sort of mood hits me, just picking up anything and working on it gets me going again. Or like a tried and trusted project or casting on something new. Maybe try flicking through pattern books. Or have you got any yarn that's super precious that you've been saving? Maybe now's the time to cake that up and pick a project for it. Yeah, so no, I don't. I haven't ever really struggled with a lack of knitting mojo. If anybody else has, um, leave a comment for Kaz down below and give her some suggestions. I hope the time of no mojo has passed and you are back to uh, getting busy with your needles. Kaz is a lovely knitter. I remember a beautiful cardigan she knit with lace down the back that she wore to the knitting retreat. What was that pattern, Kaz? I can't remember, but it was lovely. Uh, oh, next up, speak of the devil. Question from Jenny of Owl About Yarn. What is your go-to comfort knitting when you just want a distraction or a break? I think comfort knitting has to be anything brainless. So it's not a particular type of project. It's not a particular yarn. It's just brainless knitting. So that could be endless stocking stitch, like my boxy that I knit. That was endless stocking stitch and I, that was fabulous. It could be a vanilla sock or it could be something with a very simple pattern on it. Um, so yeah, just mindless, just where I can let my hands go through the motions and just let my mind quiet. And um, yeah, I find a lot of solace in stocking stitch. Um, and I also find projects that I have a connection to somebody from particularly comforting as well. So again, going back to the boxy, that was your yarn, Jenny, that, that you gave me. Um, so I found that comforting. And the pattern was a present from Mars of Hay Brownberry. So I felt like when I was knitting on that, um, I was thinking about my friends as well. So yeah, anything that gives me some sort of um, emotional connection and that's in a super brainless stitch pattern. Um, last question for today is from Cov Kimbo. Hi, lovely lady, how are you doing? How's the whole being an accountant at the moment trying to sort out panicked clients going? Are you all right? Has everyone been nice to you? I saw that the government released a load more information about the 80% um, wage support. Um, I don't know if you do payroll as well, but yeah, I hope you're doing all right. I know you're going into the office um, a bit, but not all the time. So I hope you are safe and well, lovely lady. Um, anyway, her question was, did your house ever get used for filming? Was it last summer that you talked about? So anyone that's been watching for a while, I mentioned, it's not January this year, but the previous year, um, a lovely man called Erwin randomly knocked on my front door late one evening. And it turns out he was working as a location scout for the BBC. And they have a very long running hospital drama series called Casualty, which is filmed in in and around South Wales and also the Bristol area, I think. And he had been sent on a mission <laughs> to find a um, house to film one of the accident scenes in. There's always some horrendous accident that takes place and then they take that person to the casualty department and then chaos ensues. And yes, we did. They came and filmed over January of... 2019 they were here for a week and two days of that was setting the house up so they put loads of our stuff in storage and crammed other things into different rooms they filmed for three days and then they put everything back again over two days um it was really interesting actually to see the process of what they were doing and um like for example they used they liked that we had three stories and they used comrade's bedroom which is part of the loft conversion as a little girl's room and they i've got a back door with a large glass pane in it like it's almost half of the door and they replaced that pane of glass with sugar glass because as part of the accident somebody got thrown through the through the glass panel um, it was incredibly disruptive. Obviously, the kids were at school. January is a super busy time of year for the gym. And we had to be out of the house from 8 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. at night with the dog. So it was 
I mean, the kids were at school and I was at work, but every day for a week, we all had to be out the house by 7.30 a.m. And we had to be doing something in the evening. And it was January, so it was dark and wet and cold. So I think one evening, Dave took the kids to the pictures and I just did endless laps around Cardiff Bay with the dog. <laughs> um, so yes, I can't remember. I think it was the episode was shown in May of last year, but I can't remember the episode number. But the storyline was, there was a single dad that lived in our house and he had two daughters that he sort of didn't let out of the house. It was a bit of a sort of um, a weird shut-in situation. And the storyline was that two burglars broke into the house and as a result of which there was a big fight between them and the dad and these girls got discovered effectively. Um, but yeah, it was fun. The, the crew were really lovely. Lots of the local residents enjoyed watching the transformation of the house because this guy was a bit of a hoarder. So they put a load of junk in our front garden, which fronts onto the street. Um, big sort of chemical, pretend chemical barrels and polystyrene painted up to look like blocks of wood and things. So that was quite good fun. So yeah, we did do it. It was very disruptive, but it was lots of fun. And um, yeah, the crew were really nice, so it was it was fun times. Okay, that's all for the questions today. Um, I did want to say a few of you have asked about the Marmite loaf recipe I spoke about on the 8th of April vlog. Um, I will go back and add the recipe to the drop-down box on the 8th of April, and I will put it in the drop-down box for today as well. So if you're interested in making that, um, I'll list it for you there. The recipe has one tablespoon of Marmite, but Conrad put two in because he's a Marmite fiend. Okay, I hope you all have lovely days. Um, I'm going to go and do some exercise before it gets too bleeding hot. Um, and it, it's going to be another um, combination of, of body weight or one kettlebell or one dumbbell or one big bottle of water workout. So if anybody needs to train, head over to the gym channel, which is linked down below. And you can work up a bit of a sweat with me. I'm not sure what that blobby bit of light is. Anyway, that's your lot for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.